Now to the latest from Venezuela, where the government investigation continues into the assassination attempt on President Nicolas Maduro by drone. Maduro saying he would even accept help from the United States in tracking down those responsible. Local tennis Cody Weddle reports exclusively from Caracas. Maduro trying to rally his base today, calling on supporters to concentrate in various parts of Caracas. The president trying to use that drone explosion just over a week ago as political momentum, proof that his government is under attack. The events today bringing Caracas traffic to a standstill. Meanwhile, the party of detained opposition lawmaker Juan Requesens also rallying today, denouncing his arrest. Requesens arrested in connection with the drone attack. Maduro now saying this video released on state TV proves his guilt. Requesens appearing to say that he helped a person cross the Colombian border as part of the attack. But many questioning the video, its audio and video not in sync, Requesens appearing dazed. His family today saying they've received little information. There have been images, some videos and a call, but the regime needs to know that until we see Juan and know how he is, we consider him to be missing. The opposition National Assembly meeting last week, leaving a seat open for the lawmaker, marking him as missing or kidnapped. The family and fellow lawmakers also gathering outside of the prison where he's believed to be held and the courthouse where he's expected to soon be formally charged in the attack. And in a surprise announcement on Sunday, Maduro saying he would accept help from the FBI in this investigation. That's because he believes some of the perpetrators are located in South Florida. Reporting in Caracas, I'm Cody Weddle, Local 10 News. Well, coming up on Local 10 News, a shocking story from Broward where a driver was ambushed and attacked at a traffic light. The victim says she pulled up behind two other cars when a masked man suddenly got out and started shooting at her. You don't want to miss our live report ahead of six. And check out this highway hazard caught on camera. A pilot somehow making an emergency landing right in the middle of traffic. We're hearing from the people who shot this video coming up. And we're learning more about the airline worker who actually stole a plane. You may remember this story from last week. Take a look here. We're hearing new details into his conversations from the cockpit with air traffic controllers and much more when Local 10 News comes right back. But first, a live look from all of our weather cameras right now. What a beautiful afternoon and evening this is shaping up to be, huh? Oh, it looks wonderful out there. We're going to hear from Betty again in just a few short minutes. Here's what's airing on Local 10 tonight. And here's what's on MeTV. And now we'll look at heroes and icons. Then join Lori and Calvin for Local 10 News at 11.
Welcome back. The flight data recorder and parts of the cockpit voice recorder have been recovered from the Horizon airplane stolen from the Seattle Tacoma International Airport that crashed Friday night. Meanwhile, we're learning more about the airline employee who managed to steal that plane, and it's what it's saying about airport security. Calvin has the latest on the investigation. Are you sure he's not going to hit us? This is frightening video of the sky showing the Q400 passenger plane. Authorities say Richard Russell, a baggage handler for Horizon Air, stole from Seattle SEA TAC Airport. I played video games before, so I, uh, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit. Russell, who had no pilot's license and no known experience flying, was somehow able to take off and fly the plane. The FBI says he had no ties to terrorism. Airport authorities say he passed several federal background checks, even extra security measures at that airport. We've gotten information that all security protocols were handled appropriately here at the airport. Before his so-called joyride ended in a fiery crash, Russell expresses remorse. Just a broken guy. Got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until now. As investigators in Seattle try to figure out how to keep this from happening again. Oh, the whole house. Oh, my gosh. In Utah, authorities are investigating an apparently deliberate plane crash into this home. Police say 47-year-old Dwayne Yao, a licensed pilot, intentionally crashed into his own home. It's a ball of fire. It's hot. The crash happening just hours after he was arrested and released on domestic violence charges. Yao died in the crash. His wife and a teenager who were inside the home escaped without injuries. And now back to that Seattle situation. The data recorder from that Seattle flight has been recovered, so investigators are now hoping that it will provide some sort of insight into why Richard Russell was able to steal a plane from one of the nation's busiest airports post 9-11, Louis and Nicole. So scary. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. An incredible highway landing caught on camera. A pilot turning a busy highway into a runway for an emergency landing. Incredibly, no one was hurt and no cars were hit. It happened in San Leandro, California. The plane had taken off from Lake Tahoe when the pilot reported an issue with the fuel pump. Witnesses say the pilot waited for a gap in traffic before making his landing. He was able to hold that plane up until all the cars got out of the way and then he landed it and then he immediately went over to the side. A single engine Cessna was five miles from its final destination at the time of the emergency landing. Shots fired inside a department store as families doing their back to school shopping are forced to run for cover. This happened in Las Vegas. Police say it was a busy shopping day at a Ross department store when an argument among store employees turned into gunfire. Witnesses say a security guard was angry after being let go. He left the store but came back with a gun and fired five shots into the air. Police were on the scene within minutes. The man went out very fast and maybe in, in two minutes he was back and was firing again. As they arrived, the suspect exited the store and began openly firing upon these officers. One of the officers was able to return fire, striking the suspect one time. That suspect was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. No one else was hurt. Terrifying video from China. Heavy rains caused flash flooding and sinkholes over the weekend. Look at this. You can see a van dangling over the edge of one huge hole. It was only a matter of time before the rushing water washed that van into the sinkhole, look at it there. So bystanders banded together to help. They fastened two ropes to the van's front bumper and began pulling. You can see a few dozen people lending a hand. They were finally able to get that van safely back up. Amazing.